Hey everybody, welcome back to The Working Musician. I'm Mike Rogers, and today we are going to be talking about the Mechanical Licensing Collective. What is the Mechanical Licensing Collective, or the MLC as it's often referred to? So, right from their website here, the Mechanical Licensing Collective is a nonprofit organization designated by the U.S. Copyright Office pursuant to the Historic Music Modernization Act of 2018. Well, what the heck does that mean? (laughs) Basically, to really understand the MLC and what types of licenses they'll be administering and what types of royalties they'll be paying, we need to understand the different types of revenue streams and royalties in the music business. And for that, I have a lovely chart that I've made here. So basically, this shows the different types of revenue and royalty stream sources for a composition and its recording. Uh, You'll notice in the brown circles here, we have the different types of revenue categories, performance royalties, mechanical royalties, sync licensing, and print or sampling. Now, there's obviously a lot of other ways that you can make money in the music business, depending on your goals. But for this specific video, I'm just covering these categories as they most pertain to the MLC. Okay, so above those circles, we have the individual sources where the revenue comes in. So let's start with the first category, performance royalties. Anytime your song is played, i.e. performed in public, a performance royalty is generated. So you got your radio airplay, this is AM, FM, terrestrial radio, uh, also broadcasts, like your music being played in a restaurant, uh, music streams, so your Spotify, Deezer, etc., and then live concerts. This one a lot of people don't know about and they miss. Um, ASCAP pays performance royalties every quarter. I'm not sure about BMI. I think they do too. But, you know, at one point I was singing three, four, five times a week here in Nashville, all four hour sets. Now, a lot of those are cover gigs, but you throw in originals here and there as many as you can, you know, and if you own the writing or publishing or even uh, some of it, then you're going to get a cut. But, but you must log your performance with ASCAP after the show. It's a service called uh, ASCAP on stage. Very easy. Log your performance, the date, the venue, your set list, and that's it. Many people don't know about this or bother to do it, and they miss out on some decent side cash depending on the venue. The actual royalty here, uh, it's based on the size of the venue and and really how much uh, they pay the PRO. uh, The venue pays the PRO for the blanket license. Most little bars, it's going to be a small royalty, but... You know, I played a three-story venue here in town. I think I played one of my works like three times or so, and I was like 45 bucks. So, you know, depends on the venue, but all these come in as performance royalties, and they're paid through your PRO, your Performing Rights Organization, so ASCAP, uh, BMI, CSAC, then paid out to the writers and publishers of the works. Uh, important to note, uh, if you're a self-publisher, meaning you haven't worked with another publisher to administer your composition, then you must be registered with the PRO as a writer and a publisher, or you will not get the publishing income. Okay, You have to have two separate accounts with them. Now, how does this fit with the MLC? It doesn't. The MLC is only collecting mechanical royalties, our next category. And this is probably the most uh, misunderstood category because it can be very confusing. Uh, Historically, any time a song was mechanically reproduced in a physical media format, like cassette, vinyl, CD, and so forth, mechanical royalties would be due, hence the name mechanical royalty. The term itself, mechanical royalty, it actually dates back to the uh, 1909 copyright law when Congress deemed it necessary to pay a music publishing company for the right to mechanically reproduce a musical composition on a a player piano roll. So this is a category that the MLC falls under, mechanical royalties. What are the sources? Downloads, your iTunes, streams, again, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, uh, and and covers of your song. Someone wants to cover your song, put it on their next album. All of those generate mechanical royalties. Now, the MLC is not going to deal with cover songs. Okay, Those are still going to be handled by the Harry Fox Agency. I think they're based out of New York. I'm not sure. But the downloads and streams now are going to generate a mechanical royalty. How's it going to work? The MLC was designed to administer blanket mechanical licenses to the streaming and download services, a.k.a. the DSPs, digital service providers like Spotify. 
the MLC is then going to collect the digital audio mechanical royalties due under those licenses and pay the appropriate royalties to self-administered songwriters, composers, and lyricists and music publishers. Now you ask, what if I have a co-writer? Yes, you will be able to designate portions of songs to different songwriters, but the co-writer will need to create their own account with the MLC if they want to receive their portion of the royalties, okay? Another important note about the MLC, um, so you'll you'll to sign up, you're, you'll go on their website, www.themlc.com. You'll request to sign up. I think it's called Connect to Collect. It is Connect to Collect in the uh, Connect to Collect in the top right corner. Uh, they'll email you information on how to access the portal, and then you'll be able to create your account. It takes one to three business days to verify your account. Very important here. Within your account, you will set up a member. Okay, a member is the person or entity that's authorized to administer your musical works and receive the digital audio mechanical royalties related to their use, okay? Now, a member can be a publisher, administrator, uh, self-administered songwriter, composer, or or lyricist. Now, if you're a self-administered songwriter, meaning you wrote the song, you didn't sign a publishing agreement with a publisher, so you are your own publisher as well, it's not necessary to create members for both yourself as a writer and as a publisher as long as the royalties are going to the same location, okay? That's you know, that's, that's different from the PRO. I remember, uh, you know, with, with, when I was logging my performances with ASCAP, the, the royalties ended in the same location in my business bank account. Okay. Half was paid to me as a writer, half to the publisher, my publishing company, but it still ended in the same location. And I literally had two, you have two separate accounts registered on their, on their website. In this case with the MLC, you only need one account, not two. And in these instances, you can determine which entity you want uh, you would prefer to receive digital audio mechanical royalties and use that entity as your quote member in your profile. Me, I chose my publishing company as my member because I own most of the writing, publishing, and masters of my songs. So, you know, I like to keep separate, keep things separate from me, Mike Rogers, the writer, and my publisher, Cohasset Drive Publishing, even though it's all going to the same place. When you're, when you're doing all the stuff, you know, it, it, uh, it can be it can get kind of convoluted very quickly, and you can get confused. Um, you know, it just depends on your goals here and, and what works for you. As someone trying to go indie, as they would say, like myself, it helps to treat the different revenue streams as different entities. It's better for accounting. It can be better for taxes, and it's just cleaner. But again, you do what works for you here. It, this is just what works for me. Okay. Now, uh, that's where the MLC is going to fall under mechanical royalties. These last two categories, I'm not going to cover in great detail because the MLC is the purpose of this video, and they're only paying mechanical royalties, as I mentioned. Um, But I do want to touch on these categories so that you can see how they differ from what the MLC is collecting. So sync licensing is primarily concerned with uh, TV, film, and advertising. The sync piece uh, comes into play in that you're you're syncing your music with TV, film, i.e. media. And this is why you usually can't play a track in the background on sites like Facebook because technically you're syncing that original recording with your video or media and you would need a sync license to do that. But any of these three sources would generate what's called a sync fee and that's paid to whoever owns the master recording. So there's also songwriting and, and performance royalties here too, remember, from our first category. And those still go to the writer and publisher, but we've added this other component here, the master recording. And this can be a writer, a, a publisher, a label, an artist. Major labels, you, usually they own the master. Usually they own the master recording. They usually pay for it. They usually own it. And they want to own it because sync fees can be pretty hefty depending on the network. Uh, you know, Most of their deals, they have it built in that they own all of the masters of the recordings that you record when you're signed to the label. But honestly, it could really be anyone. You know, there's no, there's no set standard in this case. Uh, there's no, to my knowledge, there's no law, you know, that says, you know, this this person has to own the master. You know, um, so you do what works for you here. You know, again, if you're aspiring to be indie, as they say, don't let anyone confuse you in this stage and and 
say, well, this is just how it is in the industry and this is the standard, you know? Uh, you know, yeah, it maybe it's standard, but, you know, standards are changed and broken all the time. You know, you, you do what works for you. I own all the masters of my music. Uh, you know, use your judgment here in the different deals that you're negotiating. Okay, and lastly, we have uh, sheet music or samples. Like um, someone wants to use part of your recording in their own work. Maybe they're, maybe they're like, wow, I really like that intro lick. I want to use that specific part of that song in my song. Uh, you know, you'd get a royalty for that. Um, those those also get paid to the recording owner as well as to the publisher uh, if they're licensing uh, if they're licensing sheet music. Don't see too much of that anymore, but does still happen. Okay, so just want to recap here. I know we covered a lot, uh, but I really wanted to cover the different types of royalties that the MLC isn't going to pay so that we could better understand the types that they are going to pay. Okay, so again, the MLC will be collecting mechanical royalties from digital service providers, DSPs like Spotify, Amazon Music, Deezer, etc., starting in 2021. Okay. You must, must create an account and register yourself if you're a writer or your publishing company if you self-administer your own works if you want to receive those royalties, okay? Otherwise, they'll sit out there in limbo. I think they might sit out there for uh, all these sites are different, maybe two, three years, but you're not going to get that money. It's not going to be automatic. You have to create an account on their website, register your works, and uh, then the money is going to get paid out, I believe, every a month or quarter, um, but the first payments are not going to get uh, sent out, I think, until April of 2021. So, and it's uh, as the time I'm shooting this video, we're j just after the new year, January 2021. So, go to www.themlc.com. That's www.themlc.com. Go in the top right corner. I think it's called Connect to Collect. Click on that. You'll register. Uh, you'll register, uh, they'll send you information on how to set up your account, uh, register your account, your member, whether it's publisher, writer, and get set up. Do not miss out on any of the royalties that are owed to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out a lot. I know this topic can be very confusing. I'll have many more in the future on, on royalties and the different business structures and things like that. But do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, share it if you like it, and I will see you next time.